On today's episode, I am talking to Sean Danker, photographer based in Singapore, who is currently working on a dance photography series, which is intended to be transformed into a book and into a traveling photo exhibit. Enjoy. Okay, wonderful. Sean, welcome. Uh, again, big time difference, right? You are in uh, Singapore, right? Is correct? Yeah, yeah. So, so it's evening for what, you, right? Five hours, yeah. No, five, no, five hours, hours or something like this, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, wonderful. So we are here, you know, to talk about your photography, right? You are doing some yes. amazing stuff. I will be showing images, you know, on, on, on screen uh, during yes, our conversation, you know, for the yeah. viewers. I can see you love, you know, dance photography. So we'll get to this, into this. But b- before we talk about your dance project, in general, I, I, I looked, you know, at, you, you sent me a portion of your images so I can see street, you know, there is much action movement yeah. in your images. I yes. guess there is a connection between this and then dance. So basically, I feel like you, you, you like capturing action movement, you know, on your images. Is this correct? Yeah, I mean, my bread and butter camera is uh, basically the 1DX3 right now. So I bought it specifically because I specialize in action, you see. And not just um, like fisticuffs action or athletics. Even when my... Because in Singapore, I'm known as a a political photographer. I'm a journalist here. So uh, you know, you know, one second, one split second makes the difference. That's why... You know, sometimes I have to fire in my bus to catch that little moment in between the frames. And th- that's why, you know, my like, the street stuff that you see, my uh, that's when I relax. I actually use a Fuji 100F. But for okay. my bread and butter, I use the, the sports camera because I need the speed. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so like on a daily basis, you are into f- photojournalism? You're working for a magazine, newspaper or something like this agency? I freelance around. So I don't really, okay. I don't, I don't, I'm not really attached to one specific organization per se. I freelance around. My work has taken me to disaster zones, to riot zones. So as you can see, for my personal stuff, I I wanted to tone it down a little, <laughs> and actually make it more <laughs> relaxing. Yeah, exactly. So so tell me now. Let's you know. I will show some of your great dance project images you know so how did this fascination where did this come from do you dance yourself a lot or you you know you 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 actually wanted exactly to balance things out when it comes to the harsh photojournalistic stuff uh it's both um like i said my my first two shows actually i've done three show i've done two shows the dance series is meant to be the third show so the my first two shows were about uh, journalistic subjects the first was about the uh, actually, we just passed the anniversary. It's the tsunami zone in uh, Japan. So for the first two anniversaries, I was there documenting the recovery. I was in Ishinomaki. Um, I picked Ishinomaki as my uh, focus because that was the area with the largest death toll from the disaster. So uh, for two years, I was there for the first and second anniversary. And uh, the first show, it was a joint show. I turned it to exhibit here. And uh, one of the visitors came. He was trying to be supportive, but he also pointed out because we were trying to sell prints to raise uh, money for the recovery effort. And then he, he pointed out the effort. Yeah, the photos are beautiful, but who's going to buy pictures of a disaster zone? And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so that, that, made me, that made me think long and hard about what I wanted to do as my next series. And hilariously, my my next series was also a journalistic event. Uh, I documented the largest Chinese cemetery outside of China in the world, which is in Singapore. Uh, Okay. Yeah, I shot a grave. Basically, I shot a graveyard. And uh, what I did with the theme of the show was I, you know, it's a graveyard is known as a place of the dead, right? What I did was I put the twist. Um, on it by making it sh- uh, by showing how the living used a place of the dead and so that was my second exhibit again a very serious subject so by the time that was winding down i was thinking okay it's time to move on and do something fun no more depressing stuff no more downer stuff no more serious stuff uh, so i was like what what do i want to do what can i do that- and put my own twist on that uh, you know i can leave my mark because that was what was drilled into me by my boss. When you do something personal, see if you can put your own um, twist on things, so you don't mm. you can stand out from the crowd. 
And I was like, you know what? I've always loved action. I always loved watching the uh, human body move. Originally, I wanted to do martial arts. But then I was, uh, I was thinking, hmm, martial arts might be a little tricky to show people sparring on the street because the police might get involved. So I was like, well, I've also, I've also, I've also been fascinated by dance and its many genres. And I felt that the two previous subjects, the two previous shows, um, they were helping me build up to this in the sense that um, it, test, it pushed my skills. Every show I did before this, it was a level up for me. So finally, I said, I think I'm ready to tackle this, the dance as a subject. And I've mm. been working on it ever since. So my, my, my twist on it, uh, as you will see in the photos, is not just I'm shooting the dancers against the cityscape. I'm going out of my way to showcase as many genres as I can get my hands on. So if you, if you Google dance photography, it's majority that comes out is ballet. I am not just shooting ballet. You can see I'm shooting pole dance on the street. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. looking at the images. Yeah, so different kinds of, you know, I think it's kind of probably some, some break dancers or maybe, yeah. you know. Uh, There's street, break dance in there. Is, uh, is there a pers personal connection to all of that? I mean, do you dance? I can't dance myself. You know, my dancers have always asked me, you know, why, why dance? You know, do you dance yourself? I'm like, I can't dance, but I love watching you all dance. So this thing about dance is that you, you notice when you look at dance photography in general, um, the aim is always to freeze the action. And when, when you look at my work, if you actually zoom in sometimes, you can still see the movement blur. And I keep the movement blur, blur there. I, I don't want to completely freeze them if I can help it. Because if I feel that that robs the uh, image of its sense of kinetics, because you're shooting dance. Uh, the guy behind the ballerina project actually said, you know, the best way to document dance isn't photography, it's video. And I thought, you know what? Um, I kind of agree with that, but let's 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 do it in a way where we still we don't rob the photo of its sense of kinetics. And how do I do that? Mm. Shh. Keep a little bit of that kinetic energy in there by showing some motion blur. You know, technical photographers will say, "Oh, it's not completely sharp; it's a bad photo." I don't care because what I'm looking for is emotion. And over the years, as I've shot more and more dance, I basically started to realize dance isn't just about movement. Yes, there's movement involved, but it's about your body language. You are speaking with your body. And that's what I'm trying to show. And I always tell the dancers before when we start, before we start this, pick your language, be very precise with your language. Tell me, you look at the scene in front of you. This is a scene, not just where you're dancing. You are interacting with the scene. You are saying something with your body. Now show me what do you have to say. No, wonderful. I'm looking at the images right now and... Uh... Tell me about the like like a you know typical kind of because I I can imagine you work like in sessions with so you you contact the artist you know or a group of them yeah and you organize the shoot but like with a with a solo kind of dancer or like you know there, there are some wonderful shots so uh, how long does a session like that you know how much time does it usually take uh, do you have many ideas up front where it comes to particular shots or is more like an improvised and, you know, mutual kind of, kind of uh, creation which is happening on the spot? It's both, actually. The most time I spend uh, working on these, it's not the shoot itself. It's preparation and uh, sometimes post as well. I don't know whether I sent you one of the photos in there. There's one photo, particular photo in there. It took five days to edit. It's the one if the light show in the museum where the girl's against the wall and then there's someone pointing the camera at the, at the wall uh, around the corner from her. They don't know that she's there, actually. That one took me five days. Exactly. So you have kind of like a pre-visualized kind of ideas. Yes. And both so, com combining them with, 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 with the dancers. Do, do dancers come up with ideas as well? Like they do. During, to... during the session when the, we are working on a shot. So I will just lay out a very broad uh, art direction to them. I want to, most uh, experience has taught me telling them specifically what I want them to do tends to not work out well because then they become very self-conscious and they actually end up um, unconsciously uh, being very stiff with their movements. And uh, you know, that, and like I said, through experience, I've actually realized when when we are working towards like what I specifically want, when I finally tell them, okay, let everything go and just freestyle it. Show me what come feels right, and that's when the be the most beautiful shots come out. 
So mm-hmm. now I just don't, I don't, re- I tell them, okay, here's some ideas for references. Show me your own take on it. Most of the time, the most time I spend on these photos is actually the prep work. I do a lot of research. As you know, I'm stuck in Singapore, where here, you know, I, and even everywhere else with the locations, what I do for research is I actually look at a lot of street photographers' work. I look for where they make use of the location, the lighting, and the shapes and shadows, how they make the photo look graphic. And I, I'm like, I try to figure out where. So a lot of it is actually detective work. In some cases, I've been fortunate enough to befriend them and, they, and I ask no. them where's the location. And I tell them what I intend to do. They're actually very flattered and they tell me, oh, okay, it's here. Um, I have one friend, very good friend in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, he is so detailed with his notes. He actually tells me what time you get this sh- uh, shadow and when, you know, what time of the year. So that really helps. Yeah. yeah. And then when I look at the dancers, sometimes I have actually have specific themes that I come up with for them. In uh, So some dancers, you know, even though they do multiple genres, for them, I look at I would look at the their show reel and oh, okay, um, your strength is actually in jazz, so let's do jazz. Or your strength is in pole, let's do pole and all this. There are some shots that I know I've sent you in there. Do the, um, you know how long they took me to create? Five years. Five years to create one photo. And I've joked with their well, dancers like, who the hell takes this long to make a photo? <laughs> Oh, wonderful. I want to take one particular image. If you remember, maybe you have it, you know, you will know immediately which one I'm talking about. This is, yeah. a, you know, there's a, I would imagine that she is probably a ballet dancer. Uh, yeah. She's sitting on a red chair. There are a couple of red chairs and the red elements. There is a man walking with a red bag, you know. Ah, uh, that was in Singapore. And, in, and on a wall, there's a painting, you know, where again, there are those red chairs painted on the wall and people yes. sitting on them. I mean, I love this shot. Now, tell me just quickly about... I can imagine uh, the, the man who walked into the frame is a random addition or yes. was everything arranged? Because it's, tell me tell me the honest story here. <laughs> Everything but the passerby was uh, pre-composed, as in arranged already. I told yeah. her, this is where I want you to position in the shot because that part of the wall uh, was mirror free. So I told her, you are, when, I, when I use uh, graffiti like this, I like to actually either make them a part of it or look, make it look like they're coming out of the wall. So in her case, yeah. I'm making her an addition to the space. I'm, add, as I'm adding to the artwork. And then it just so happened the guy walked by and of course I'm shooting in bus mode to catch each and every bit of his him, him walking in. And then after that, I in post, um, I just uh, get the alignments right and set the color toning and voila. Now, with that particular shot, when uh, audiences here looked at it, because it's a Singaporean shot, and I'm very proud of that shot, um, many people here, when they look at the photo, they actually tell me that they thought he's part of the mural. They, didn't, they don't think I, that I he's was, part of the... He's, he's, yeah, they don't, I, I, they don't I, think he's a real person. Yeah. This shot is brilliant. I mean, it just catches my eye. Because you manage to you know, kind of catch those layers which are yes. in the scene. And yeah. you really, the viewer really needs a couple of seconds at least to, re- to, to kind of decipher it, you know, to, 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 to realize which is the part of the actual painting, what one is the real life, you know, person sitting there. Yeah. And the, the fact that he walked with a red bag, I mean, you... you that was serendipitous. Good, good, good instinct, yeah. very quick reaction, you know, so... Yeah. All this, all those years of document shooting documentary st- stuff, I think <laughs> it paid out here in those couple of seconds, yes. right? Many, you know, many in situations like that. Many times when we have people walking by, the dancers will actually stop, uh, thinking that uh, I don't want the guy in the shot. And I was like, "Why are you stopping? Continue. I can use him in the composition depending on exactly. how we get the shot." <laughs> yeah, excellent. One last thing I want to touch on, you know, is post-processing because mm-hmm. I can see, I can feel kind of that you are enjoying the, 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 this final part. You are going for different looks, maybe different, you know, uh, different color palettes, you know, contrasty scenes. You are, you are after color in general. Yes. Uh, how important is this last part, the post-processing part in your process? Uh, and are you, you know, when photographing, are you already have the vision of the final image or, the, or is there much experimenting and playing with the image, you know, during the post-processing process. Again, it's both. So sometimes when I look at reference shots for the location or if I'm at the location scouting myself, I will see stuff and I will immediately come to mind, okay, this is how I will process it in post, especially like if it's a very strong graphic shot 
or there's many distracting colors. So sometimes you see I play with black and white and selective coloring. So for those, when I do selective coloring, it's because there's very strong shapes and lines that black and white will bring out better. And then I keep the subject in color so your eye will immediately be pulled to them. But then, you know, it's a perfect balance. So it's not just take away. And then there's sometimes like that one that you just asked about, that ballerina. That one, actually, I went and sat there when we were shooting. Even before we were shooting, I did not particularly have a particular color tone in mind. When I scouted the location, I just took the normal colors. Then when I came back, so sometimes when I look at the location, I don't just see things as they are. You know, I, when I stop and I think and I look, I start to see things as they could be in my mind. Yeah. Oh. And then when I'm working on it in post, I, so I have a bunch of presets uh, in my Lightroom. So sometimes when I'm trying to figure out what works best, I will go back and forth, make multiple copies, and then just see which combination works the best. So that one actually, that one that you asked again about, uh, that particular preset, the reds tend to be, and the magnetos tend to be too high. So I always have to bring the faders down. Yeah. So when, once I got it to what I think uh, looked best and then compared it to the rest I was like uh, this is the magic shot right here mm. yeah what is the final destination uh, you know dream destination of your of your dance project you, you mentioned the book in the very beginning right so this series is meant to be my magnum opus it's supposed to be my legacy uh, which is why I work very hard in making each and every individual shot look different you can't imagine how hard it is to keep up, keep that up. You know, and sometimes when I create something really strong and powerful and outstanding, I'm like, how am I going to top this? You know, have I reached the pinnacle? Because I don't want the plateau. Once you once you get comfortable and you keep making the same photo over and over and over, you're dead creatively. And I don't want to hit that. I don't want to hit that wall. So this series, like I said, it's meant to be my legacy. It's meant to be my magnum opus. The plan is, you know, uh, I want this to be like what Salgado did with Genesis, where it's in museums, it's in galleries, uh, and, and people talk about it. I want people to go see the work and talk about it. So, uh, you know, the intention is to make this into a traveling exhibit, international traveling exhibit, which is why I shoot, mm -hmm. on, you know, in multiple do you have any, cities. Any, do you have a timeline like in, in mind, you know, or amount of images you wanna you wanna you know collect create uh, before uh, before I'll, I'll be getting to that. Uh, the timeline wise, actually, originally this was supposed to be done in five years, and then uh, the fifth year came and went. I was like, yeah, this is not going to be done in five years. It, I'm in my tenth year now, and I don't see any end in sight. I've actually spoken to a publisher in Tokyo already. They are up for making a book out of it. But I explained, um, so I have some things going on in my personal life, so that's going to add a delay. And I also explained the plan, you know, it's not just Singapore, Australia, uh, Japan. I want to also shoot and show in um, the US, uh, Europe. Europe, I have at least three cities I want to stop by in, you see. So I want this to be a multi-stop city uh, thing. So... I explained to the publisher first and you know, because uh, I'm, I'm looking after a sick parent. So that obviously adds a constraint to when I can go shoot. And he was very understanding. He was willing to wait up for when I'm, when the work is finished. He understands it's a work in progress. So, you know, as and when it will be done, I can't say for sure. And every time a dancer recommends another dancer to me, I'm like, oh my God, you guys are like Pokemon, you know, I have to collect you all. <laughs> So how am I going to end this? <laughs> yeah. But well, when yeah. I when I hit those cities I mentioned, then I will at least the first volume is done. Okay. Yeah, Sean. Well, all the best with the project. We'll be following you. You know, feel free always to share. You know, your milestones with our with the Frames community. You know, thank you. fingers crossed. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Fascinating stuff. Uh, uh, really, I can feel it. You are so into the project, devoted. That's. So I'm sure everything what you are dreaming about will, will happen. I mean, well, just just it, go for it, you know. It's, it's not just my life's work. It's actually what's keeping me alive through the hard that's, times. Yeah. That, that's the spirit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Sean, thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. Stay, stay in touch and yeah. we, we connect on the platform, right? Thank you right. so much. Gracias. Huh? Merci beaucoup. Gracias. Talk soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Thank you.